Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It is September the 20th and we're looking at Ecclesiastes um, chapter 4, 5. Um, so let's read a little bit of it together and I'll tell you what my password is. There's so much in these passages but I'll focus upon the password if I may. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun and behold the tears of such as were oppressed and they had no comforter and on the side of their oppressors there was power but they had no comforter. Wherefore I praise the dead which are already dead more than the living which are yet alive. Yea, better is he that doth that both they which hath not yet been, who hath not seen the evil work that is done under the sun. Again I considered all travail and every right work that for this man is envied of his neighbour. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. The fool foldeth his hands together and eateth his own flesh. Wow. So what Solomon has done is he's researched, he's looked into uh, the wicked, he's looked into those that are suffering, to those that are oppressed, and he's come to the conclusion that it's all empty and it's all um, vexation of spirit. He says, and this is one of my passwords for today, better is a handful with quietness than both hands full with travail and vexation of spirit. Wow. Now there's a lovely little passage from verse 9 onward. I'm going to read it and it's my password for today. I've had another little one already, but this is another one. It's verse 9 to verse 12. It says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labour. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? If one, if, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Wow. Now there is so much wisdom in that. This is why the Lord has ordained marriage, so that two might be one, and that uh, so that loneliness might not occur, so that when a person falls, there's another there to lift them up. And he says, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So when three people come together to do a project or a task, that is something very significant indeed. Now, verse 13, some of these proverbs, some of these thoughts are absolutely amazing. Better is a poor man, sorry, better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. When an old foolish king, an old foolish king is someone that won't listen to anybody anymore. He says, better a poor wise child than an old and foolish king. Now in chapter five, uh, at the beginning of chapter five, in the first two verses, it says this. It says, keep thy foot when thou goest into the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thy heart be hastily utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth Therefore, let thy words be few. Now, it's the Lord Jesus that takes that thought in the Sermon on the Mount when he's speaking about prayer and reiterates the same truth. Verse 5, better is he that thou shouldst not, better it is that thou shouldst not vow, that thou, that thou shouldst vow and not pay. So he's been talking about vows. He says the foolish man is the one who utters with his lips that he will do something when he actually is unable to do that. It would have been better to not say it than to make a vow that you're unable to keep. There are little phrases in this book which are beautiful. Verse 12 it says the sleep of a laboring man is sweet whether he eat little or much but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. 
Wow. And then verse 13, there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. Wow. But these riches perish by evil travel. He begetteth a son, and there, and there is nothing in his hand. He cameth forth of his mother's womb. Naked shall he go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away with his hand you see solomon had seen great riches but he'd seen an evil thing an evil thing was when a man lives all his life and he's got nothing to give to his child at the end of his life wow now um let's let's move on it's uh, let's go to chapter six he says this is a password verse one to two he says there is an evil that i've seen under the sun it is common among men a man to whom god hath given riches wealth and honor so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth yet god giveth him not power to eat thereof but a stranger eateth it it is vanity it is an evil disease so how interesting that um, solomon points out that actually sometimes a person gathers immense wealth but then he falls sick and is unable to ever come into the benefit of all that he has um, accumulated and then we'll go right the way down to verse 12 for who knoweth what is good for man in this life all the days of his vain life which he spent as a shadow for who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun so this is all about human life it's all about under the sun it's all about we all live under the same sun and it's all about our human life and he says do you know what it's all pointless our human life is all pointless this is the sum total of human wisdom and and it's no good saying i want to be wealthy or i want to be weak want to be rich or i want to have money and i want to have servants and i want to have houses and i want to have land if in the end you're unable to enjoy it and you die a bitter and lonely man wow and so it is said by the greatest and the wealthiest and the wisest man that ever lived well god bless you it's great to speak to you and look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow have a great day bye for now